Hello, welcome back, Nick Lenz's Comic Corner. Classics last non-classics. This is episode number 235, and double shot number 168. Okay? First up is a trade I do I own. Deathstroke, Volume 1, God of War. Written and drawn by Tony S. Daniel. With um inks by Sadu Ferro and colors by Tamu Mori. Now, one thing you now the thing about now now this is the start of the current volume right now that's going right now. I also own the issues that basically this uh, trade collects. Um, in the first issue, you had the first post flashpoint appearance of this particular character. Let's see if I can find him here. Um, of course, he had Deathstroke be a badass as always, killing whoever he feels like. Let's see where is he. I know I saw him in here. And I know he's an issue one. There he is. Uh, that's him right there. Ai Cheng from the Wonder Woman series. Yep, he's back. Yep, that's Ai Cheng. Yeah, he makes his first post-Flashpoint appearance in this particular story. He, he only appears just for that one issue. And as far as I know, he doesn't appear since this particular storyline wrapped up. Now... In this particular thing, now one thing I should also note is that um, at the end of the first issue, and this is not kind of a big spoiler, but uh, yeah, Deathstroke is the aged. Now, as for the exclamation for this, as far as I know, the book is about what 16 issues, 16, 17 issues in this volume, and they still have not explained it at all exactly what. I Chang did to him. Just other stuff he's doing. Maybe when this fly ends and finally solve that problem, like how the heck did he basically just de-age 20 years? Because, oh yeah, and, and he can see through both eyes. Yep. He can see through both eyes. Um, plus, you get a chance to return of, of, of uh, Jericho, a.k.a. Joseph Wilson, uh, Slade's son. He, he, he actually reappears in this book. Now, in the previous volume of the series, um, Jericho got killed off in the final issue of the series. Yeah, they killed off Jericho. They killed off Grant Wilson again. Apparently, in this continuity, he's been killed twice now. And, of course, they killed Adeline Wilson, Deathstroke's ex-wife. Now, Rose is pretty much a supporting character in this series. Now, after the storyline wraps up, he basically is searching for... He's like... He, he, he basically spends most of the rest of the time searching for his daughter. He gets so close, but gets pulled away. And she doesn't have that bad of an outfit in here. I should show her outfit. Uh, let's see. What's a good picture of her? Oh, yeah, and Harley Quinn shows up in here as well. Yep. Here's Harley. Yep. Harley Quinn shows up in here, too, along with Batman. As a matter of fact, uh, let's see. Yeah. Harley appears in several issues of this series. Mm-hmm. Along with Bronze Tiger. Yep, Bronze Tiger. And they kind of, in a way, retconned his previous appearance, where he looked like he looked like looked like his mask was like an actual tiger. Yeah, here's what he actually looks like. This is what Bronze Tiger looks like. So basically, uh, what they're doing with this series is that they're retconning some stuff and incorporating some stuff from the Arrow TV show, like... Having uh, Deathstroke being drawn like Manu Bennett. He's the actor who, who actually played him. Um, as for uh, Bronze Tiger, it's a similar looking outfit to what he was wearing in the show. But this looks nothing like Michael J. White. Not at all. Well, I can't actually find... Here, uh, here we go. This outfit right here, that's the outfit Rose is sporting in the series. Uh, she's still sporting it now. And my favorite line of the whole series is this. Deathstroke in the final issue saying, I am Slade Wilson. I am Deathstroke, the Terminator, in this badass splash page. Yeah, this is awesome. Awesomeness at its finest. Now, Tony S. Daniel... I should note that after the story concludes, he stops doing the interior artwork. He just sticks to the covers. Yeah, he just does the writing and the covers. I think maybe... Now, even though the story is really good, 
My guess is it probably takes a lot of time for him. And I do know that he is going to be taking over as the artist for Justice League. Along with Brian Hitch. At least Brian Hitch doesn't have to do the artwork. So you have two artists doing a series. Fine. I don't have a problem with that. But this, this is pure awesome. And this volume, for a lot of people, is better than the previous volume of the series. I don't blame them. There are some issues that are kind of bad, but not all of them are bad. Some are actually pretty good. I mean, the opening eight issues are really good. The global issues are just contradicting each other. But toward the end, the series does get a little bit better before it gets canceled 20 issues due to low sales. But this, this is still continuing. Now, the interesting thing about this particular character is, is that I had already reviewed his first appearance in my Teen Titans Classic video. I believe it was in Episode 2. Uh, where his first appearance was New Teen Titans number 2. That's where his first appearance is. As a matter of fact, right here on this opening page, on this uh, page right here, it has like the, the title page, it says Deathstroke, created by... Let's see. Uh, there we go. Deathstroke, created by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. Now, that is also in the Starfire series and Cyborg. So at least that DC acknowledges the fact that they created this character... Uh, along with Starfire and Cyborg. Now, Raven is the only one of those characters who, um, from the early issues of New Teen Titans, who has not got an ongoing series yet. I kind of think she probably has earned one. I know Cyborg has. Yeah, so this is the third um, of the Marvel and George Perez characters I have reviewed the first trades for. Now, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to review Volume 2s of the other two. This one, I'm hoping to get Volume 2 this soon. So, this 9.5 out of 10. This is awesome. Next up is a really long and somewhat not very well liked story. Superman Doomed. Now, this book is really, really long. Look at this book. This is like super long. Now, this book contains <clears throat> Action Comics 35, 30 of 35. Action Comics and number three, and number three, Superman, thirty to thirty-one. Well, this is Superman. This is volume three for Superman. Action Comics is volume two. Superman, Wonder Woman, seven through twelve, and and number one for them, Supergirl, volume six, issues thirty-four, thirty-five, and the Superman Doomed, number one, number two. Now, there are a few different writers. You got, you got Scott Lobdell, Greg Pak, and Charles Show. Charles Show just writes, um. The, 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 the two bookend one-shots, and he writes a Superman and Wonder Woman series issues in here. Uh, Greg Pak, oh, I almost forgot. There's one there one in here. I, um, that one is uh, Batman Superman number 11. Now, the Batman Superman issue and the action comics issues are written by uh, Greg Pak, and the Supergirl issues are done by Tony Bernard, and, of course, um, Scott Lobdell does the... Um, the Superman issues, and he does the the uh, the he, he does the I think he does just the first issue. Now, so I should note when this journal was coming, every single issue came out on time, but there's a couple of problems with it. One, the two annuals in here, uh, and number three for Action Comics and Superman, one Woman and number one. There's a slight problem with the two annuals. They're both considered part three of the uh, I think it's like the third chapter of the storyline. Yes, and. They both take place, they, they intersplice, the, they actually got fixed in here, which I'm glad I did. They took both those annuals and took those pages and combined them to one, to like one big story. Now, I am not really sure what was the whole point of splitting up those things, those two particular annuals. Why couldn't it just be just a, a double side issue of either one of the two respective series? Either Action Comics or Superman Wonder Woman basically written by both of them, or have, like, the first half of it just entirely written by uh, Greg Pak and have the other half written by Superman Wonder Woman, uh, Charles Show. But no, and of course, I should also talk about the delay of the last issue of the storyline. Superman Doomed, number two. This issue was delayed by a whole, by at least, it was supposed to come out, um, I guess the story came out in 2014. It wasn't released until September. It was supposed to come out in August. It was delayed by a whole month. I have no idea why DC did that for, but they did. And that is one of two times DC has actually delayed the finale to a particular 
major storyline or in this or or a crossover they've done forever evil they did it for this they did it for endgame um let's see and they did it for um well actually they just did it three times so far this is actually the second time this is the second storyline where they delayed the finale by a whole month now i'm not sure why they did that but they did now this book does have great artwork um the story is basically doomsday now basically there are three there because the fact this is like really long and it takes a while to get through this heck it took me a few days just to get through this particular thing this thing is long and trying to read every single issue without being like distracted by the artwork or something like that and tony s daniel I should also note, he is the artist for the Superman Wonder Woman issues. Yeah, he's the artist for Superman Wonder Woman issues. Um, I'm not sure who does the other issues, but I know he does the Superman Wonder Woman issues because he was the he was the first artist in that series. He's the majority of it. Now, there are three Aftermath issues in here. One from Supergirl, Action Comics, and Superman Wonder Woman. In the Superman Wonder Woman issue 12, that is the first ever... Like, in a way, meeting, first ever fight between Giganta and Wonder Woman. This is the first and so far only time in this continuity that Superman, that Wonder Woman has ever fought Giganta. And I keep wondering though, why can't she fight her own title? Why did it have to wait this long? At this point, it had been three years in the continuity, and she's never fought Giganta at all. Heck, she's fought Cheetah in Justice League, but she can fight Giganta? The super the Supergirl issue is just here between Supergirl and Jason Todd, and it's kind of hinted at that Jason Todd is attracted to Supergirl. Okay, and the kind of and the console helps help sets up for Supergirl. It kind of helps sets up the end of her series because after the storyline wrapped up, Supergirl ended. Not only that, though, Supergirl is coming back. Thank you, DC, for bringing the series back. But the reason why Superman, the Superman issue, stopped at issue 31, there is a reason for that. The reason is this. Change the creative team after issue 31. Scott Liddell stopped writing the book after issue 31 and after he'd been writing the book since issue 13. The book was handed over to the creative team of Jeff Johns and John Meehan Jr. Doing the Man of Tomorrow storyline. Where it had not the good artwork and the villain was okay at best. But this, this is pretty decent for what it was. But I should warn you, if you read this particular trade, it will take you a while to get through it. Um, I want to be nice to this because the artwork is good, so I have some portions of it. I especially enjoy the 20s Daniel Star artwork. Um, let me show you some some of the artwork, just a sample of some of the artwork. Yeah, and plus you also have uh, characters from Scott Liddell's series like uh, Ghost Soldier, Haro, and the organization Tower shows up in here as well. And, of course, uh, Superman's coordinating with the Justice League, which, okay, fine. But it seems like the second crossover, this is the, this is the third crossover that Superman's had in this current continuity, and this is the second time he's had to involve the Justice League in his own crossover. Now, normally when he's had crossovers, usually he's able to handle it on his own perfectly well with the Superman family. But this is the second time I've seen it where he has to call him the Justice League. And yes, he also did this in Savage Dawn as well. Had to call him the Justice League. And this whole storyline, the Justice League is based upon the bunker. Now, I do have a theory about that. The reason why it's based on the bunker is because the storyline takes place not long after the events of Forever Evil. I would say maybe a couple months at best. That's why how long I think the storyline takes place afterwards. Yeah, but here's the kind of the thing. The storyline started toward the end of Forever Evil. Yeah. But this is okay. That's all I can point at. It's just okay. Uh, the artist in here besides Tony S. Dan, it was Aaron Cooter and Ken Lashley. Um, I'm going to give this book a... I'm going to be nice to give it an 8 out of 10. It's still a pretty decent story. Except that it's kind of... Well, for some people who are longtime Superman fans... They didn't care for the story at all. They considered this one of the worst Superman storylines ever told. I thought it was pretty decent for what it was. But that's my honest opinion. People have their own opinions when it comes to Superman.
like there are people who are diehard Superman fans. I am not a diehard Superman fan. I'm a huge fan of Batman, not Superman. Why do I read Superman? Because I just feel like it. That's why. And I feel as though why not read the storyline? So, 8 out of 10. Yeah. Now, I do know that the uh, Superman book is being uh, taken over by Peter J. Tomas. I did hear about that before they announced it. Uh, Action Comics is done by is going to be doing by, done by Dan Jurgens, who is uh, just wrapping up a series for uh, Superman, Lois, and Clark, and he's also writing uh, continually writing um, Batman Beyond. Superman Wonder Woman is going to end this month. Batman Superman just ended as well. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, episode, take, stay tuned for. The next episode, which will be episode 236, and Double Shot, number 130, 169. Until then, see you there. Bye.